Hey guys, welcome back to the Steel Forum. This one comes to you by request of Hail Carty. This is a video, just a basic demonstration of how I use some of the Power Blue Beam. This is for all of the estimators out there for the detailing companies. If you're just doing estimating on detailing, uh, to do full estimating for, you know, taking off the weight of steel and all that stuff, I'll do another video on that. It's much more complex. But this is just a simple one for those of us who use the, uh, the swag method or a silly wild guess. Okay, so I'm going to just jump right in here. Okay. To do all of this, this work uses custom columns in Bluebeam. And the way to access that is you're going to go down here. You're going to click on your little blue nubbin, as I call it. You're going to go over to here where you see columns. And next to it is the settings wheel. You're going to click on that to manage columns. You're going to go to the custom columns tab. And I'm going to just start with one, which is cost. Okay. In order to do this, you're going to click add. Okay. Normally, because I already have it in here, I'm not going to add it again, but I'm going to open it up. Okay. You're going to call it cost. You're going to say its type is number, format, normal. You can, of course, set this up to be anything, but I don't like to set it to anything because later it's going to put dollar signs in or other things, and I don't want that. I just I just want a number in there. Okay. Then the important checkbox here is include in totals. Okay. You're going to press OK. And then you're going to click Save to Profile. Now, what Save to Profile does is it says, anytime now that I open a PDF, I want you to add this custom column in for me so that I can use it. So when you get a new set of bid documents, you open it up for the first time, it's going to create that for you. Now, so I'll press OK. All right, now, I'm going to look at this area. And this is how I do my estimating. You know, everybody's got a system. For me, it's just as simple as this. I look at this area and I'm going to say, okay, this is worth $5,000. Okay. And then I'm going to see, let's say I see this detail and I know that I'm going to have to come back to this later. I want to make sure I don't miss it, but I'm not ready to put a price on it. So I'm going to highlight it, but not do anything with it. Okay. Then I'll move on to another sheet, make another highlight. This is worth 10000 And this is worth $7,000. Okay. Now, paying attention, you'll notice that down here we're getting all of these values are coming in. You'll also notice real quickly that, hey, there's a highlight here that you don't have a value for. I use this a lot to make sure that I don't forget things later, particularly with stuff like stairs where you expect there to be a blow up detail. You highlight the original call out or the original picture of the stair to make sure that it's dealt with later. Uh, but you don't necessarily want to dig for it right now. You highlight that real quick and then later you go through any highlights that don't have a cost associated with them and make sure that you, you get those finally taken care of. And the nice thing is that with Bluebeam, because you have all of these visible, you can just click on it and it's going to take you right to that markup and show you what it was that you missed that you can put a price on it. That's a fantastic little thing. So I'm going to go ahead and put my cost there, 3000 And there it is. Okay. Now, this is all done in Bluebeam uh, version 12. There have been, of course, new releases. We hate them all. <laughs> There's, it's 2017, 2018, um, and I think they're even coming out with 2019. They've introduced nothing but more bugs, uh, the, some prettiness, and there are some features in there that some people like, but we're, we're digging version 12. We've got a whole bunch of licenses of it and uh, we're sticking with it for a while. So I imagine the functionality is the same, but just for that forewarning that this is what I'm using. And as you can see, it's done the math for you. It, it, it totals everything up. You got your estimate ready to go there. Um, if you're doing more advanced estimating, like you're, you're taking off weights, bulk quantities, I'm going to get into a more in-depth use of custom columns and show you how to do that really soon. But I wanted to get this one out of the way, get you something. Uh, so kind of once you get that, that thought in your head of how this stuff works, you can do some customization on your own. Now, if at the end, for whatever reason, you want to take this over to your estimated program, it does have summaries. You can do CSVs, PDFs, or XML. Obviously, the one that most of you are going to use is the CSV summary. It's going to output all these columns for you and make your life a little bit easier to transfer that stuff over. Uh, the other side is a lot of times I, I have this description field. If I'm doing miscellaneous metals, the estimating on it. I will go ahead and type in a description for each one of these things, say stair four. And then at the end of it, I've got a 
uh, complete scope. I use the same thing, I'll use description as well for exclusion. So I'll say, you know, exclude uh, wire ties or exclude wire mesh or whatever else it needs to be. But again, if I get a highlight it, I can look back here and make sure that I didn't miss anything later. So that's it for this little tip, a little demonstration on how to use Bluebeam for your detailing estimating. If you have questions, obviously let us know down in those comments. We hope to see you back here on the Steel Forum. All right, just one more thing, and I, I wanted to address this because it's something, a trap that I fell into, and I bet it's something that you're going to fall into too. Now, as soon as you see this and you know that it's going to do math for you and it's going to summarize things, you're going to want it overcomplicated. Don't do it to yourself. You're going to end up hating it, okay? If you take and you put 30 columns in here and each has got a this multiplier times this and, you know, I could sort it by this, this, and this, try it first get the basics going a couple basic fields play with them for a while and then see what you like see if it meets all your requirements then you can go into much more complicated things but there is also one other thing that i wanted to sneak in here at the end and that's if there's something where you're constantly estimating the same thing if you've got a project with a bunch of the the, the same properties in it and you just want to make sure okay i'm going to grab all of these and every time I see it, I need to price another one. Let's say it's a, a stainless steel rail. You can, okay, over here on your toolbar, oh, I got my wrong toolbar here, your tool chest toolbar, okay. For instance, let's say I want a bearing plate and I'm gonna price my bearing plates for each because they've picked a ridiculous design, okay. Bearing plate. And each of these bearing plates costs some five bucks. Okay. Now, all you gotta do is you can add to tool chest, my tools, and then it gets a number automatically, like in this case, number six. So all you gotta do is you can either just click on it, okay, and it's gonna put another one in, or you can just hit the number six on your keyboard. And that makes, if you're doing a lot of these things and they're across multiple drawings, for instance, stainless steel rails, you want to set up the properties to all be the same and then be able to copy them and edit them so you don't have to retype that. That is a quick little tip that makes it easier. This is a feature that I would love to see in SDS2 in the future where, you know, like a, for instance, a weld symbol where you can say, okay, put that weld symbol on my toolbar with the 3 16th fillet weld on one side, two at 12, something like that. That would be a great little feature. But we're talking blue beam today. So I'm not going to get too obsessive. So that does your other tips. Again, hope you see you back here on the Steel Forum.